Hey Coffee Roasters, I'm going to show you a really terribly produced, boring video tonight that just shows my process. So I have a turbo oven, stir crazy coffee roaster as you can see here. Um, now I'm just going to show you how I use it. So right now it's warming up and I'm going to roast for you 13 ounces of the Bali Quintimbana beans. Um, so here we go. So. Starting off, what I do is I have my turbo oven set to 500 degrees. I haven't touched that knob in weeks. So it just stays at 500 degrees. And what I do is I turn it on. I don't turn on the, the popper. In fact, the popper's heat element is disconnected. So all I do is just let it heat up for, oh, I don't know. Basically, I let it heat up until the oven cycles on and off maybe twice. Um, what that tells me is that it's reached its, its set point and it's as hot as it's going to get. Um, so I don't add the beans until it, the whole unit is preheated. And usually I'll, I'll let it go for maybe two minutes after it's, it's cycled. Um, typically I'm doing something else here in the basement while it's preheating so I'll just let it kind of soak in in that time period. And that snapping you here, it's probably, I don't know what that is. I just cleaned the glass off so you guys can maybe see the beans move around. So perhaps it's the liquid uh, boiling off inside the excess cleaner. So it's heated. Let's put them in. So um, I have my beans, 13 ounces, and I'm going to set you down on top of my shoe box. Here we go. All right, I apologize in advance. This is the worst thing ever. So the most important thing for coffee roasting, your wooden spoon. Never leave home without it. There we go. Got my agitator going. So all I'm doing here is just making sure the beans aren't stuck on the middle. That's it. That was a good dump. All right, turns back on and I find my timer. And we go. So I don't use a temperature probe anymore. When I first started using the turbo oven, I did. And um, I found it fiddly to position. And honestly, the, the temperatures weren't telling me that much. At one point I had two of them. I had one hanging in from the side and I had another one come in from the very bottom of the unit. Um, if you buy PID controllers, like I'm sure all, you, all of you do, uh, they usually come with screw type thermocouples. It's a quarter 20 thread. It's a little bolt with the thermocouple on the end. And I had drilled a hole in the bottom of the unit JB welded a nut on the underside, and it, so I had this thermocouple just poking up to the bottom of the pan of the popper. And I always noticed that it read uh, 50 degrees lower than the probe immersed in the beans, um, probably because the thermal, ma thermal mass of the metal soaked away more heat. I don't know. So either way, the temperatures weren't telling me a whole lot, and I could get good enough roast just going by sight and sound. All right, so we're one minute, 14 seconds into it. Um, typically I get one crack, first crack around, oh, I don't know, eight or nine minutes, eh, probably more than that. And then second crack is coming in around 12, 13. Um, I really just use this timer just to just to kind of keep a rough, rough track of the roast. Usually I'm buzzing around on here doing other things. And I'll just glance over at the timer here and there, just to see what's going on. So instead of babbling, which I'm not good at, I'm gonna try to cobble together a better viewing point. Um, stirring arms in the stir crazy are, are hard to get right. And I copied Peter's design, Peter Schmidt, and it works really well. Thank you, Peter, for publishing that. So I'm just going to try to let you guys see how the design works and how well the beans move around. Um, for a 
this is pretty good. I can't hold it though. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so my my setup just uses uh, five five thirty seconds stainless steel rod um, bend to the shape. You can kind of see there. I, I have a different video that shows the rod in more detail. You can also check out my website tracezero.net. So here they go. They're you're drying out. We're at two minutes fifty-two seconds. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? And so my, I do have the uh, the chaff escape door on the back, um, and I honestly, I you, maybe will prop it open one every three rows. Um, I really haven't found to have that great of an impact yet. So. Usually I'll just forget about it. Um, I understand that some people use use the hot air escape as a means to regulate the roast temperature, but I found that I don't need to regulate the hot air temperature. It I think my house is substandard wiring or the the voltage around me is fairly low. I had a be more for a few years and and then I never ever ever could get good roast out of it. It's really underpowered. Whereas other B-more owners had the opposite problem. They would have um, roast with too, too fast of ramp time. So, I mean, as you can see, I have my, my oven set to 500 degrees, and I have 12 or 13 minute roast cycle. So, you know, my house is the best. I'm going to leave that and drink my beer. So if, if you're still actually watching this, I'm impressed. Um, I'll put in jump links towards the beginning of this video for the impatient. Uh, you know, links to first crack, second crack, so forth. We're at five minutes in. I should have hung this for a wire. That would have been cool. Next time. So I just turned on my fan, which I always forget to do. Then I wound up with a basement full of smoke, even though I spent all this money putting in the ventilation system. There we go. That's professional.
846 and a couple of pops that sound like first crack coming in. My, my cracks aren't very definite. I imagine it's because my bean agitation is bad. They're kind of spread out. Back when, with my D more with his drum roast, drum, roasting drum, um, I'll get more defined cracks. Alright, this has been kind of a slow first crack. I think 2C, just based on a lot of smoke coming out, might be coming in pretty soon, so I'm going to move you aside and get ready to dump into my cooling tray. Gonna go pretty soon. If they're looking nice and consistent, nice color. These these bollies have been kind of over roasting on me. Yeah, they're getting oily. I'm gonna shut it off. Stranglers. Here we 
go. Put away. go. All right, here's my cooling bin. That's all I do for this. So this is using the vacuum from the blower. Just does a downdraft through this colander and it does a really nice job of getting all the bits and pieces of cap. That's cooling off. Here's a shot of my little roasting station. So, main roasting chamber, plexiglass top, just so I can see what's going on. A little power station with, you know, a switch for the popper, plugs and whatnot. And uh, this is a variable speed control I got the Amazon. So this controls my blower. So the blower sucks in here. And as you can see, I have this door here, so during roasting, I'll leave this open and I'll close this to get airflow out of the chamber. And then when I'm cooling, I just close this little door and it pulls out of there, so. I have this piped way over here. It's a roll cage fan I bought and just goes out my window, so. Kind of a pain to set up, but as a basement roaster, it's pretty much a necessity. Otherwise, your entire house smells like coffee smoke all the time. All right, these are cool. So I dump them into a can and I clean up the shop vac. So that's my process. I hope someone found this useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye.